up, Mariam? Wake up! Hey you, what up? Welcome to my channel, welcome back. I'm Mariam. Today, it's Faves X Fails time for the month of February, a video in which I discuss all of my favorite and failed products for the month. Also, as I talk about my favorites, I like to apply them onto my face to show you rather than tell you why I like them and why you should also try them out. Today, we are talking about a lot of different foundations because there were a lot of foundation releases this month. Let's hit it, Faves X Fails. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> let me get into this video. Ooh. I did not sleep well last night. Let me tell you, I am one of those people, if I don't get my eight hours of sleep, if I get any less than that, even if it's like six hours, I am cranky as shit. And so today I am that person, I am cranky. I look underslept, not very pleased right now, but it's Faves X Fails, so I'm gonna be professional, <laughs> though probably a little tooty. As always, I have my notes, I come prepared. This month we have lots to discuss. So first of all, I'm just gonna apply my primer because I don't have a favorite primer for the month. I also don't have a failed primer for the month. Generally speaking, I'm just not that into primers. Once I find the one that I love, I tend to stick to it. And it's really hard to impress me when it comes to primers, which is why I keep sticking to what works for me. Today it's the Essence My Skin Perfector Tinted Primer, shade is 20 nude beige. I also like to use 30, but I just ran out of that one. Need to get a backup. All right, moving on to foundation. So have you guys noticed that there have been so many foundation launches? I feel like I've been talking about foundations for the past two months, straight, nonstop. All it's been is foundation reviews on my channel. And I don't mind that. I love reviewing foundations. I love testing them out, conducting wear tests, and then kind of like rounding it all out at the end of the month with the Faves X Fails. So just like in last month's Faves X Fails, I'm just gonna go down the list of my favorite foundations, starting with the one that I like the most and finishing with the one that I like the least. The foundation that was my number one favorite this month was actually the Makeup Forever HD Skin. So now this is a reformulated or an updated version of Makeup Forever's Ultra HD Foundation. That one has been around for a really long time, at least 10 years I wanna say, and it was always a go-to of mine. I've always liked that foundation and this one is no different. I really like this one, although it didn't apply as flawlessly as I expected, but the reason why I like it so much is because this is a foundation that looks incredible on camera. And how did I find that out? Because I actually went to a movie premiere of the Batman. I wore this foundation the day of. I looked pretty good on the red carpet to myself. And then when I actually saw the images from Getty, I was so floored. Those were literally my favorite Getty images of myself that I had ever seen. And mainly because I really love the way that my skin looked thanks to this. So this is a $43 product, glass bottle. The shade that I'm wearing is 2Y20, which is supposed to be a match to Makeup Forever's Ultra HD Y305. I think it's a good match, though I did notice that some of the other shades were leaning a little bit too yellow, so do keep that in mind. So with this foundation, I'm gonna apply this strictly to the center of my face because this shade is a little too light. It's not exactly the shade that I would typically go for. And then for the perimeter of my face, I'm gonna use something different to contour. Also, I noticed that whenever I don't get enough sleep, my skin quality literally diminishes. Like, my pores are enlarged. I'm more oily than I usually am. My skin doesn't feel as, like, tight on my face or on the muscles of my face as it normally is, so I don't know. I am one of those people, I hardly ever get hangovers, but when I don't get enough sleep, I am like almost not a functional person. Kind of like how some people are when they have hangovers. It's literally how I feel. All right, so this is just like one layer of the Makeup Forever HD Skin, my top foundation for the month. And now I'm ready to talk about my second favorite foundation for the month. This one is actually a BB cream. I am talking about One Size Turn Up The Base BBB Cream Beauty Blur Balm by the one and only Patrick Star. This I thought was an incredibly unique product. It definitely took a bit of a learning curve and I actually had to have Patrick literally tell me how to apply this on properly in order for it to work. And had I not listened to him, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed this product as much as I did. But applying this with my fingers and then kind of slapping it onto my skin did exactly what this said it does. It blurred my texture, it covered up my imperfections, it looked really 
<laughs> Did you just hear that? Did I just like trill? That was weird. Okay. And it looked really nice at the end of the day. So this is another fave, though I will warn you, there's a learning curve and it's not super intuitive when it comes to application, but it's $33, so cheaper than this. And I would say this is a really great one and done. If you just want to slap it onto your face and be out the door, this also is self-setting, so you don't necessarily need too much powder, especially if you're not oily like me, if you're normal or dry, this would be a good bet. But today I'm not gonna apply the one size turn up the base because I am actually gonna go for my third fave for the month, which happens to be Ilia True Skin Serum Foundation. So now this is not a new foundation or a new product, but they did add some new shades. So it was kind of like relaunched. I did try it for the first time this month and this applied really, really beautifully onto the face. Unfortunately, because I am so oily, this foundation and I are not a great match. I cannot wear this this in the center of my face where I produce the most oil because at the end of the day, my skin eats up this foundation. It's not great, but it does look really pretty upon the initial application. And so today I'm gonna actually use it on the perimeter of my face where I'm a little bit more dry or a little bit more normal, I guess. So I just wanna show you how pretty it is. So if you are dry, you will like this foundation a lot. This is dewy. So basically I'm just applying this product with my fingers and then I'm gonna blend it out with the same brush that I just used. This blends out really beautifully, really flawlessly. The coverage is medium and the finish is really beautiful and dewy. All right, there you have it. So now this is a $54 foundation. So kind of on the pricey side, it is a very clean foundation. So it's formulated with 90 something percent naturally derived ingredients. So that I really like, but my only problem with it is that usually these clean foundations aren't really meant to last on oily skin. It's not that they're not meant to, they just don't, period, point blank. Okay, next on my list is Kosas in number four spot for the month. So this Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation with SPF 25 had a lot of claims and basically all of these claims were based on like a 25 person survey. So for me, these trials are just not large enough for them to be able to state all these claims. People do not read the fine print. People do not know that all of these surveys are based on such a small controlled group of people. And so because of that, I just find all of these studies to be a little bit unfair fair and a little bit, a lot of bit exaggerated. So that's that. But this foundation claims to improve your skin based on like what these 25 people had to say. So to me, it really doesn't prove anything, but the marketing is very tricky. <laughs> in my book. Anyway, this is a $42 foundation. It applied kind of nice at first. It wore pretty well, but I had my brother and sister here during my wear test and they both said that they've seen me look better. They both said that it's a decent looking foundation for every day, but it's kind of meh. It's kind of just all right. For $42 for all these claims, it's kind of just not worth it. It's kind of just not worth it. So yeah, number four slot. I'm cranky. I need chocolate. This is the best thing that's happened to me all day today. Mm. Anyways, moving along. This month, actually, just a couple of days ago, I also tried out the new Nessa Myricks Yummy Skin Serum Foundation. I did do a review. I did really like the way that this first applied and how it looked on the skin. It made my face look absolutely flawless, but I didn't like how sticky this foundation felt on my face. I also didn't like how heavy it felt. And moreover, it didn't really wear very well at the end of the day, but I'm not actually going to judge this product just yet. I wanna give it a couple more wears. I wanna give it a couple more tests because during my wear test of this foundation, I realized that I might've applied a little bit too much product. And then after I had published the video, a lot of people said that I did indeed apply too much product, that with Danessa Myrick's products, a little bit goes a long way. I didn't need to put three drops on my face. I think just one drop would have been enough for me. And then it wouldn't have been as sticky and as greasy feeling. So I'm gonna give this another run. I'm gonna try it out again. And I will definitely update you in next month's Faves X Fails about whether this worked or not. Moving right along to concealer. This month, I am loving Benefit's new Boing Bright On Concealer. So this is supposed to be the eye brightening sister to the original Benefit's Boing Concealer, which I already love. And this one is no different. This one is really good, just like the original. In fact, I don't really see too much of a difference between the two outside of the shades. 
where in this case, they're meant to be brightening for the under eye. So just like I like the original, I like this one. It's $24, similar packaging, but much longer with the eraser at the top. That's not really an eraser, it's just there for looks, but I love it anyway. So there's that. All right, let me quickly blend that out. The shade that I am wearing right now is Ginger. And Ginger has a little bit of a peachy undertone, which is great for the under eye. <laughs> The face is starting to come together. And I guess you can say so is my mood. All right, I'm gonna set that with my one size translucent. Also gonna set my lids and my chin. And now moving on to my favorite powder of the month, which is actually last month's favorite, but for some reason I forgot to include it in my Faves X Fails. But anyway, this ColourPop Pretty Fresh Powder Foundation or Pressed Face powder is my favorite powder for the month. First of all, this is really inexpensive. Secondly, this can be used as a one and done, and I am someone who has been looking for a good powder foundation for a long time. I do like the Makeup Forever one. I don't have a shade in the one size. I hated the Fenty one, but this ColourPop, pretty fresh, I actually really like. And I like this entire line. I like the foundation from this line. I was about to say I like the concealer, but I actually don't know if there's a concealer, but I bet you if there's a concealer, I'll probably like it. What I like about this powder is that you can use it on top of foundation, you can wear it alone, you can build it up to full coverage, you can lightly dust it, it wears very well, the shades are really flattering, and it's so super inexpensive at like $13 or $14. I am a fan, ColourPop, you did something right, I like this one. Sadly, I did not love the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It powder, that one was just way too chalky, way too poor emphasizing, way too textured enhancing. I actually don't even have that powder right here in front of me to show you because I hated it so much I got rid of it right away. But this is what it looks like and I don't love it. I did however like Physicians Formula Butter Believe It Blush. Unfortunately, I think I might have gotten rid of that one as well at the same time as I got rid of the powder, but I did like the blush from that collection. It was really pretty and very peachy. This is what it looked like and this one I like. But a blush that I actually do have in my possession at the moment and it's a blush that I liked was this blush from ColourPop's Pop Art Collection. All the packaging is really bright and yellow and fun. And one of my favorites was this shade here called Called Kitsch. It's a really, really pretty, bright mandarin peach. Just like a really luscious color. But also, I'm a big fan of this crazy neon pinky purple. I actually think I'm gonna try this one today, just for fun, just to see what happens. But hold on, first I gotta get a cat hair out of my eye. I'm gonna use this big old brush from Refer. I'm gonna dip it just a couple of times and kind of just hug the cheekbone. That is so fresh and pretty. I love cooler blushes on my warm skin tone because not only does it pop, but it just looks better because I don't need to apply as much in order for it to be visible. And it always looks so fresh and healthy. Oh, I almost forgot how much I hated Pacifica's Fluffy Blushy. That product, I hated. I can actually say I hated that blush. First of all, the moussey, creamy, balmy consistency of that blush gave absolutely no pigment. I literally had to make a dent in the product in order to get some sort of payoff on my face. Secondly, that blush completely ruined my foundation when I was first testing out the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. And so that product is kind of like on my shit list because I was really loving where my skin was heading and then I ruined it with the blush, so therefore I never reached for it again. Obviously I got rid of it, but I gotta say, I hated it. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it this way, but that product was really bad, really, really bad. All right, in the highlighter category, I am going to designate it to a product that is actually not really a highlighter, but it is a glow serum. Yes, I'm talking about the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Glow Serum. This is actually a primer, but it is a little bit too luminous for me and for my oily skin to be used as a primer. Instead, I've been using it as a highlighter and I love it for that super glass skin finish. So again, a little bit goes a long way. I'm just gonna take a drop, boom, and look how pretty. And what I like about this is that it actually sets, but it stays looking very wet. So to me, this is a genius product, and I love it as a highlighter. Wouldn't necessarily use it as a primer, but I will absolutely be reaching for it to highlight my points of interest, especially if I want them to be reflective, if I want them to be more glassy and glossy. This is the product for that. A Little bit on the jaw for that jaw highlight. Look at that. 
That's nice, but don't apply it over powder like I just did. Apply it over your foundation or over your bare skin and then add powder on top. All right, moving on to the eye category. Have you guys noticed that there has not been any new eyeshadow palette releases in like a whole month? Yeah, I noticed it too, and it's a pinch bothersome for me, but I am looking forward to that new palette from Natasha Denona. I believe that is coming out soon, and spring's right around the corner, and I really wanna play with pastels and brighter colors, so I need eyeshadow palettes, but this month, I literally don't have a fave or a fail in the eyeshadow category because I don't even think I reviewed any new palettes. Yeah, so sadly, no eyeshadow palettes, but I did find a new favorite liquid liner, and it's for all of you who like a waterproof formula that's transfer proof that will stay on looking black and beautiful all day and it's also got some lash benefits i am talking about the new freck lash rocket eyeliner with lash enhancing peptides so not only is this a great product on its own not only is it a super crisp black liner that lasts all day that doesn't smudge that doesn't smear that is transfer proof but also it helps your lashes grow so kind of obsessed i I will say though that this wand is not super flexible and I am someone who prefers a very stiff wand because it really helps me be precise with my line. But for those of you who struggle with eyeliner, maybe this is not the ideal applicator, but for me it is ideal and I really love it. Also, it's a dippy liner. I find that those are the best. They last the longest, they don't dry out. I don't know, I am just a fan. So I'm just gonna give myself a baby wing. I'm not gonna attempt anything crazy today because let's face it, I'm not in the best mood to do so. But what I am gonna do is stick this liner in between my lashes just for that added benefit, you know? Kind of like that. So this product is $24, totally worth it in my opinion. It reminds me of my favorite Bomb Cosmetics Schwing liner, also my Lancome Grandiose. Grandiose, I said it so funny. All right, sticking that one in between my lashes. Boom, boom. All right, let's move along to some mascaras. So this month, MAC came out with the MAC Stack Micro and Mega Brush Mascara. I found it to be very gimmicky. I didn't see a major difference between the Mega or the Micro Brush. In fact, the Micro Brush, which is the mascara that I ended up keeping, just to show you, looks like a regular brush to me, but it's not my favorite type of brush because it's not a normal brush. It's one of those silicone rubbery bristles that doesn't really work best for me. So I was not a fan of this. I guess if you have really long or really full lashes, this will be a formula that you may like or appreciate. But to me, I didn't really care for it. Plus it's not waterproof. So it did not wear well on someone with my eye shape. From this collection, however, I did like this MAC False Lashes Maximizer, which sounds like it's a product that's meant for false lashes, but in fact, it's just a lash primer. So again, I thought the marketing was like really weird there, but I did enjoy the product. So what I'm gonna do is actually curl my lashes. I'm gonna apply this lash primer that I do like. I'm also gonna apply this primer onto my lower lashes. I'm making the ugliest face, I can sense it. And now I'm actually gonna use my Hero and Make Long and Curl Mascara that is super waterproof. This is a mascara that I like. It has a non-gimmicky wand. And I just wanna see how this lash primer acts with mascara that I already enjoy. I guess it's okay, but I can honestly say that I liked it better with the MAC Stack. Though I can't say that I was impressed with the MAC Stack mascara. Sadly, it made this mascara just a little clumpy. So I guess I don't really like it after all. Because although I like the way that MAC Stack mascara looked with this false lashes primer. I did not like the way that it wore because it wasn't waterproof and so it smudged at the end of the day. So clearly it's not meant for me. All right, that is my story. Moving on to lips. This month, I am loving the new Jaclyn Cosmetics Bright and Bold Liquid Lipsticks. I did do a review of these. I have it on my channel. Swatch model and I went in, all the way in. And I really, really like the color. So today I am gonna go for one of the orange shades. No rules or coming in hot. Totally not gonna go with my sweatshirt, but but who cares? And what was great about these is that they actually came with a corresponding lip liner, which was the exact match to the liquid lipstick. That I really like. 
So I guess I'm gonna go for the shade here, coming in hot. I find that orangey lipsticks make your teeth look whiter and your skin look brighter and more perfect. So don't be afraid of orange lipsticks. They are actually surprisingly versatile. So let me let this set real quick. Okay, lipstick is almost set. This shade I really like. I feel like it's part coral, part orange. So very, very flattering on my skin tone, but also will work for so many different skin tones, whether you are fair or deep or tan or caramel, this will work for anyone. And now for the final product that I want to talk about today in my fails category is a product that I literally wrote the word LOL next to. I am talking about Fenty Icon refillable lipstick. Granted, the actual lipstick product is very good. This product is not a fail by any means. It's a very rich, beautiful lipstick, and I love the shade range. I feel like they're all in the orangey brown category that reminds me of the 90s, and I definitely feel a little bit nostalgic looking at them, and I do like that. However, the laughable part about it is the actual case. This Fenty case was impossible to figure out. It was not user-friendly by no means, and I ended up ruining a lipstick by trying to fill it into the case. And after I was done, and after I had published that video, I recall seeing all of these comments about how many people actually experienced the same thing and broken their lipstick. So I feel like Fenty owes us all a free lipstick at this point because the case is just so damn stupid. I'm sorry to say it this way, but to me, that was a big mistake, massive fail on their part. And although the idea is cute, the execution was just not there. That is my story, that is my truth, I am sticking to it. It was really difficult for me to get through this video because like I said, I am really tired, I did not get much sleep, and when I'm tired, it's really hard for me to talk. So I'm sorry if this video was uh, all over the place. I really tried, but don't fault me if I wasn't perfect. Everyone has their bad days, and today is clearly mine. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video regardless I hope I was able to give you some useful information on some of these products. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like. What were some of your fails or faves for the month? Comment below. Let your voice be heard. I will be replying back and I will see you in my next video where I will hopefully be feeling much better. I'm zooming on out. You are checking out more videos over here. Do it because I need all the support I can get right at this moment. All right, you guys. Love you. Mwah. Peace.